I've known Manish for about 20 years yeah. and uh, I've really watched with uh, pride and joy as he's uh, built himself into this creative powerhouse uh, storming across the world. And I think, you know, once we start the presentation, you learn more about him and what makes Manish, Manish. Yes, I'll start with a little presentation, presentation. so that all of you get aware of my work. And uh, in the meanwhile, we'll also have a conversation yes. together. Yeah. And thanks, Rajshri, for getting me here. <laughs> Is there some audio? Can we have the volume, please? Can we have the audio? So uh, this is some of my work which I've been doing for the last few years in Paris. And uh, I finished about 10 shows already. And this was my 10th show, the last one in Paris, which you'll be seeing it later when I, I, I talk with Priya. Uh, for me, design is nothing intellectual, nothing. It's pure, simple, straight from the heart. I think when you're honest to yourself, people understand. And that's what matters to me. I, can, I cannot say that I'm very qualified. I think it's uh, people who acknowledge my work and make me qualified. I have never, uh, I, I'm probably the most insecure person ever. I doubt it, <laughs> I doubt it but uh, he's supremely confident. And uh, how did you start off as a designer? What brought you into design? You, you, know, you came from a simple background in, uh, from Bombay. So you know, what really was that strong influence that made you, you know, what made you it was, uh, I was, I was, I was doing commerce before. I was studying in Narsimonji, which is kind of one of the best colleges, at least that time. And uh, I obviously didn't understand anything. <laughs> I said, uh, I'm at the wrong place. And you would not believe that I actually read about NIFT in a newspaper. And uh, I just uh, applied for it. One of the reasons was because I think I wanted to stay alone. I came from the kind of background where leaving your family didn't exist. So that was very exciting for me. And I applied for NIFT and I got through. And that's how I landed in Delhi. But once I was in NIFT, in about six months, I realized that I was at the right place. But I didn't know before. You didn't know before. And um, I mean, what you're showing us right now is your latest collection, uh, Parker Rabanne. Yes. And you've been in Paris now for about a year working. Yes. So what's it really like to be a creative director of Paco Rabanne. What does it take? I mean, we, we'll go back into your journey, but really you're right there now. I think uh, being creative director uh, means also being convincing to everybody in my office. <laughs> being creative is one thing, but being a creative director is another. And, and that's the difference. Uh, your creativity is there, but it's about how you put your creativity and still convince everybody that you are doing the right thing is the toughest point in my so job. So is that, are you trying to say that it's very bureaucratic in one sense? I mean, you're working for a large corporation, so uh, you're no longer only answerable to Manish Arora, you're answerable to a whole oh, no, host yeah, of people. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. isn't that a difficult transition from, you know, being... It is. It is because uh, with my brand, because I do two brands, I do yeah. my show and uh, Manish Arora's show in Paris. I'm the only designer who does that now in, yeah. in Paris, who does two shows in five days. And, uh, and goes crazy. It's, it is crazy. It is crazy. And especially for an Indian who has nobody as an example to follow or mm -hmm. no experience of that kind from my own country. It's tough. But at the same time, I would say that it is, it is so enriching. Every day you learn so much. And it puts you in place because with my brand, I have such a freedom that sometimes it's not right. There. I have five bosses on top of me right. and then the owners. So it, it takes, I have to convince each one in my own way and still manage to do what I want at the show, not offending each one of them who has all different personalities. So right. it is, that is what a creative director is, I guess. No, and I, yeah, I guess keeping everybody happy and of course and delivering those uh, fantastic shows that help to sell the clothes. And I managing mean, to sell yeah. and getting the reviews. Yeah. So yes. what, how do you really keep your, uh, how do you keep these things two separate, two separate things? I mean, you have the Manish Arora brand, you have fish fry, both other fashion, I'm not talking about the other accessories as yet. Um, and you have Paco Rabanne. Paco Rabanne comes with its own heritage, legacy. Manish Arora is something else. Uh, so how do you manage to switch between that and you know, wear this hat? How does it work in your head, in your it's, it's, it's very simple because uh, I plan it, I'm a quite a good planner like that. So it, it's, I live 
really two lives, you know. It's, it's very simple. And one of the simplest things is when I do my show, I take a metro. When I do Paco Rabanne, I have a private car. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how. So he has big budgets in that, uh, Paco Rabanne. So it's, it's, it's easy, but it's complicated, but it's, it's planning. It's planning well. When I do my collection, I only do mine. When I do Paco Rabanne, I only do Paco Rabanne. Of course, closer to the show, we mix everything, and I'm doing both at the same time. But they're two separate teams, and the only common person is me. Well, you know, your aesthetic, like say the Manish Arora, and I'm wearing a Manish Arora, sorry. <laughs> Let me put that plug in. And um, your aesthetic, especially what I've seen in, you know, in India, has really been the psychedelic Goa colors, and you really brought that in in a very contemporary manner into all your clothes and how your accessories, etc. How does, I mean, that's not moving into Pakur Rabban. Pakur Rabban has its own style and, and yeah. ethos. So how, how have you managed to keep that back? Or what is the, so what are you doing with Paco Rabanne that is Paco-esque with uh, Manish? The thing is, the reason why they've chosen me is that they want me mm. also in Paco Rabanne. And fortunately enough, the Paco Rabanne archives are so, so yes. amazing and so well kept that I, I don't really need to be confused. I always have, I mean, it, it's amazing. I wish one day you come to Paris, uh, you can see the archive. It is so beautiful that it's, and it's so strong that I don't, there's no ways I can get confused. I'm always inspired by the archives, but at the same time, they do want uh, my, me, my touch in it, and it's, it's me who's bringing it back, so it, it, there has to be Manisha Rora in it, right. of course. So you're taking, it for, you're taking the legacy forward by using new forms, and yes. not, the, not bringing the old But keeping color. in mind what he was. Yes. I mean, in my office, it's funny because look, everybody has a plier in their hand. Because Paco Rabanne is about metal. metal yeah. And even the pattern makers, even me, all of us have one in the hand three days before the show. We always, uh, it's more, we forget that we are fashion people. We are actually just more of metal people. Yeah. I, ch I just That's want just to show this swatch, video. Yeah. This is a swatch which I did uh, two years back. Yeah. Collaboration. That's Swatch. Uh, was that your first um, international kind of collaboration? My first international collaboration was Mac Makeup. The Mac first collaboration ever was Reebok, but it was right. in India. And uh, you know, it's very funny. I am Ahmedabad once did a case study on me, and they ended up saying that uh, I should put a board outside my office that trespassers will be collaborated because <laughs> <laughs> because I have done so many collaborations. Sometimes yes. I lose account of. No, I think that's what's really unique about you as a designer, because at a very young stage of your career, you've uh, worked young. with yeah, well, young <laughs> stage of your career. Um, you worked with Mercedes, Swatch, Mac, Nivea, uh, done Nespresso boutiques. I think you're going to show us some. Yes, of stuff. I'm going to show you a, a really nice animation of uh, Nespresso. It's a little far. I did okay, Nivea so also, which, Nivea. Is, which is was the largest collaboration probably. It was 500,000 uh, boxes with my print, which was sold worldwide. I That's even probably. designed a Barbie doll for the 50th anniversary of Barbie wow. last year. I did a collaboration with Mercedes. I, you know, it's amazing. I even do Good Earth, which is still ongoing. I think I'm the only designer who's actually seen how you make an espresso capsule, how the Mercedes cars are made, how Navy cream is, but I've visited all the factories. So you go I've to seen, the factories, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so what is your process? Let's the say first thing I'm designing do, this. I mean, the first thing I do when the company approaches me is I go and visit them. I like to go deep inside to see how you make the product, even though it might be irrelevant uh, for many people, but for me that's very important that I see how, how you made. make that product Did first. you go to the Absolute factory? I wished, I think they stopped me. No, 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 they, they didn't <laughs> let me go, and you know okay. why. <laughs> Yes, and I, I also do a lot of collaborations for uh, brands which are mass market because my clothes on, on their own are quite expensive. So yeah. I, I use brands like Tra Swiss. Pranton. This is the window at Pantin, Paris. So this was just a window that you did uh, yes. now? Yes, yes, this was okay. Elephant Parade, which was last, in, year. Uh, last year in London. This is a collaboration which is very dear to me, Nespresso Coffee. I mean, the coffee, and they come to me and they say, we want to uh, revamp uh, the, our sure. image. 
for Christmas? And I said, yes, of course. And I went and visited them in the head office in Switzerland. And you will see the end result. This is the little animation we made out of the collaboration. Yeah. characteristics as well as their movements or when you see there will be an Indian one coming soon and you'll know that Indians yeah. move their head like this and I, I made sure that came in the character so it, it was a very complicated project it was a one-year project but the end result was pretty amazing and then didn't you do the store yes I, I designed 250 stores for them yeah. where all the windows during Christmas were designed by me including uh, their flagship store in Soho and in uh, Miami and in Champs Elysees in uh, Paris. Yes, you will see them. That's the Indian one? Yes. <laughs> Indria. <laughs> the way it's, it's probably the, the, the amazing part of this collaboration was that I had all the creative freedom, which is very rare to work with such a big uh, brand. Well, I, I, yeah, I saw some of the windows and then these little capsules made into these little figurines, which is hilarious. <laughs> we actually had made them yeah, and we I put them on the windows of all the shops, yes. It was fantastic. It's a bit long, so. It's okay, let's <laughs> get enjoy watching it. The visuals are fantastic. So that's what's interesting, how you take your, let's say, your visual language into all these brands. And that's, I think, really the strong Manisha or identity of this kind of you know, modern there, psychedelia. There is one is. concept behind my brand, which is, and which I believe, is that life is beautiful. Yeah. I, I probably wake up every morning and tell myself, life is beautiful, and honestly, it is. And, and that's what I do with my brand. All I want is when people wear my clothes or people who see people wearing my clothes, it has to bring a smile on their face. Yes. And that's what my aim is. When people yeah. come for my show, they go back with a smile and I'm happy. That's what matters to me. Well, you said that you design fashion to make, to spread happiness. Yes. And I think that's a great premise to start off with because you can't do, I know, only black. I mean, even though you're wearing black. Oh, yes. <laughs> you can't do only that black stuff because if you're, if you're saying you're spreading happiness, I think really maybe it's color that brings that happiness or that joyfulness and playfulness that you have no i think it's honesty in my design it comes straight from the heart and we indians live for emotion you know and and that's what works in my case because um, europeans not a bit sad <laughs> so and you know we are so energetic and full of life and that's what that's what works so how i mean who are the buyers of your energetic and playful and happy clothes uh, I mean, internationally. All again. kinds. Yeah. I, I, I have buyers from uh, Tokyo in Japan. I sell a lot. Or Middle East is a big market for me. Mm -hmm. Or even France, uh, Italy. Uh, it's all over. I think it's not the country. It's the character. It's the person who buys my clothes, right. which is very important. And not a particular place or, 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 or a country. Or location. Yeah. 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 This is notified you. Okay. Yes, I also work with a lot of artists. artists. I worked uh, always because I think uh, that I have a huge connection with them. Mm -hmm. I worked with Indian artists Subodh Gupta, who did, who did my that, backdrop that for my show, show yeah. in Paris. Hiroshi Nagai, who's a Japanese artist. There is. That's your new collection. No, the last collection I'm going to show after this. Yeah. It's very, the time is running very fast there. <laughs> <laughs> it's on your face. Don't bang, worry, bang, bang. there's a yeah, time bomb there. <laughs> yes. No, but uh, for me, uh, for my shows or uh, working in Paris, it's uh, such a learning experience because it's so different from the way we work here. So how do you work? I mean, you said you spend a week here and a week there. So you, apart from, of course, the jet travel, you, you have the metro versus the private car. So how, do you, how else do you kind of transition between um, India? Because it's a difficult thing to do, like eight, nine shows, one after the other, running between two countries. How do you keep yourself sane? Uh, and, and, and how do you 
you know, keep that balance between what you're doing. Uh, you know, actually, there's no time to think about it. Mm -hmm. I just go on and off, on and off, from one to the other to the other. I mean, I finished my own show and in the evening, and the next morning, 8.30, I'm in the office to work on Factor Roban. And that itself puts you so much on the ground that, okay, your show is over, but it's, it's okay, it's a job. You know, for me, fashion is a job now. Earlier it was, uh, you do one show and you, it's like you've conquered the world. No, you, you do a show. I have actually gone, after my Paris shows, I've gone, finished my show and gone straight after the meetings and straight to work after that. And the next day I've gone straight to Dr. Roban. So this reputation that you have for being this wild child and, uh, you know, kind of, I don't know, the courtier of India or whoever else, uh, is not really true. You're no. hard-working. I meeting think, uh, driven, nothing comes easy. Focused. Nothing comes easy. For me, discipline is very important. For me, it's it's about being on time. Being mm -hmm. on time is something that is what makes you who you are. And uh, for me, when I go to a meeting and I'm on time and I'm from before, I already know that I've conquered the meeting in a way mentally. And that that's what yeah. And that's what is very uh, very uh, for me. That's something I can never forget. And. Uh, there, it's, a, it's in France or in Europe, you're always on time. This is the show which I did just four days, five days back in Paris. That's uh, with a graffiti artist? The last one, yeah, yeah. Every show of mine has a concept. It's, for me, fashion is not just about clothes. It's, it's about true. the whole feel of the clothes, the, the theme. For example, this show was actually done in the open. It was, uh, you, you can't see it, but you're actually facing the graffiti which is being made live while the show is going on and the river is behind you. You are sitting literally on the river at the back and uh, the concept was about graffiti and it shows, it, the, the audience doesn't have to think because you know, people mm. in Paris come for shows, they're going every 15 minutes, 20 but minutes, they're running in a show. So to put the point across, it's very important. So for me it was very important that the place and the way the show was done, it was very casual. It was while the graffiti is going on, the models are just walking and people are watching the show. And you will see towards the end, the graffiti is ready on time. It takes a lot of planning, planning to, to do, do this. Yeah. And you will also see, which you will see now, I will not tell you, you will see in the end what happens. But it, I mean, you will see and you'll understand what goes on. And of course, on. it's a Manish Arora show and life is beautiful. I yeah, always. That. Yeah, like always. I always believe, and every time I do my show, the basic concept is life is beautiful. beautiful. I mean, the way I show it, I take different means to show that. Mm -hmm. It could be once, it could be a theme like as basic as jungle or circus or, or this time graffiti, but the core value is always about life is beautiful. So, do you think, and I'm looking at this, do you think you've kind of toned down your um, palette in this collection? Mm -hmm. It looks very. Uh, very much more muted and not what it's just the beginning That's okay, just <laughs> <laughs> but, but but no I, I have not toned on I would say I've adapted okay which is very important for me to last long because there's one thing about having fun mm. but the second thing is about selling too I mean that's what will make me do more shows and I right now I'm in the middle of finding the right balance of right. doing what I believe in and making the buyers happy and uh, it's a bit tough to do that, but yeah. I'm on my way. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it, it is. I mean, it's looking quite interesting. Because I'm waiting to see the end. But that is the pro you know, sometimes because some of your clothes were probably so way out there that, you know, probably a buyer would feel, okay, fine, how can that relate to my life, even though you f find it beautiful and, um, you know, fun and sexy and all those things. But I guess, you know, people want to take that into themselves, and not everybody can... I think well, not was, everybody can wear a circus, uh, whatever that. Yeah, I, I would around. say it was it was kind of a plan, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe which I didn't do it intentionally, but I, I had to grab attention before, right. you know, and I had to put myself into everybody's mind, especially internationally, and it's not easy because right. there's so many people, so many designers, not just in India, all over the world, and uh, me being the only one who's almost done 14 shows now right. and in a country of 1.3 billion in our country probably there's one designer who's done 14 shows non-stop it must take a lot so it so it is kind of a, 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 a plan to because if I was doing just plain black blue and uh, clothes it, won't be you. it will not be me and yeah. for me it's very important to take That's India 
and show it to the world because the world there doesn't need another Western designer. No. What they need is a modern Indian designer. So how do you how do you project that modern thing? I can't see the details in the clothes, but I can see some Indian imagery on what some I of do those, is no, it's not Indian what, imagery what do you, actually. Some of it. What, no, it's no. it's a it's a graffiti. What I do is I use Indian craftsmanship mm -hmm. uh, for to my advantage. But my imagery is very uh, modern so that everybody can understand and access uh, it, and, and access it uh, worldwide. Uh, for me, it's about uh, modernizing India, not westernizing India. You know, there's a difference in that. So it's about taking the visuals of, which is globally accepted, right. but use the craftsmanship that I have the access to, which many people outside India will not, mm -hmm. and show that to them. It's a combination of both. So what are the elements that you really like repeating and using, the Indian elements that excite you and that you feel that can be, that, that, that are translatable in I your work? I think it's very obvious, and designer friends of mine in the audience will also know it's, it's embroidery, yeah. which is something which we can do better than anybody else. Not even the Chinese can do mm -hmm. embroidery. So. So it's only Indians who do embroidery so well. And that's something uh, I, I always stick to and I always continue to do, but, but always adapting in new ways and new techniques, mm -hmm. which is very difficult this, to explain here, but. Yeah, yeah. we're not seeing close-ups here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure we can do that offline. But um, so that's, that's the exciting part. What is happening next in your, in your creative thing? What are you looking for next? I mean, like now you're getting a balance with Paco Rabanne. Uh, you've had two shows. Uh, you live between the two cities and, and, the, and the good parts of both. Well, and at the moment, what, what I am next? just still adjusting. For me, it's always the beginning. Mm -hmm. I have never, for me, it's always a work in progress. And I'm still in the middle of it. I'm still trying to find the right balance. I'm trying to make Paco Rabanne. Uh, for the first show of Paco Robert, it was all about making news, and mm -hmm. we did it very well. We, we, we did a show which people will remember. We have, I think, already about 25 covers of magazines. We have uh, uh, Lady Gaga that wearing was. five outfits in one night, which has mm -hmm. never happened before to any brand. And so we did that. Yes. It's done. Now, the second show, which happened three Last days week. back, mm -hmm. was where I said, okay, we made the news, now let's sell. Mm -hmm. So, so we concentrated on that, and the collection, the last one for Paco Robin was about selling, and which I don't know the figures yet because the sales are going on right now. Okay. But that was the intention. Now, the third show I would say would be the right balance between both, where we can come to a way where we do uh, news making as well as selling. That will be my aim for the next collection. Uh, hopefully I can manage, I don't know. So you want to keep a balance of experiment, because Paco Rabanne was really known for experimentalization. Yes, yes. So he that's was why only known for experimentation. experimentation so. In fact, he never kind of sold. He only made clothes which were conceptual. But today the woman is different. You know, mm -hmm. Today women are very practical. A woman wants to go to work in the morning and probably go after work straight to the party and then go home. Mm -hmm. I have to keep that in mind when I'm making clothes. I cannot make something all in metal. I have to think of something that she can fold in her bag right. and carry with her and uh, be able to change in her office and reach mm -hmm. a party. Mm -hmm. So all that has to be kept in mind while designing clothes these days, not like what it was when he did it. So are you going to still experiment with materials, or how, how, is that, how do you think that experimentation is going to happen? What it, is that? Because there's so many exciting materials to be used in. It, but you know, it's, uh, our main identity is metal. So we keep that in mind. And turning metal into fabric is the biggest challenge we have. So that's what we try to do. I mean, in my last show, unfortunately, I can't show you, but we, we tried to make metal into fabric or use metal in just that much amount that is still believable. And pliable. Uh, pliable, exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it is, Paco Rabanne is a brand which is very identif identifiable, but it's very difficult to come to relate it into actual clothes, yeah. to make it relevant for now. It, it's, it's a very uh, complicated it's a process. Challenge. It's a big challenge. But I'm in it. I'm in it, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm trying my best. Of course you are. <laughs> What, so what do you think um, would be the lessons for, like, say, Indian designers uh, who need to and really w want to make it on a global stage? You've done it very successfully. Um, well, with yeah, you okay. have. <laughs> and uh, with, with all the endorsements and brands and relationships, nobody else has done it to that scale. And also uh, in the way you've, you know, you, you're designing, you know, you're designing a space for me uh, for yes. a suite. Um, 
So you're looking at interiors, you're looking at how you, know, how you can really push the boundaries as a designer. And I think that's really the need of the day because you don't have to be stuck at being a graphic designer or an X designer. I think if you have the sensibility, you should be able to yeah. go into many different areas. So what, is your, what are your lessons for, for the people in this audience? And how do you think they can take their careers forward or their, you know, what I, are their lessons? I think the most important thing is to find your own style, mm -hmm. which is very important today or always. But uh, that is, the, for me, is the biggest disappointment, disappointment for me when I see, uh, not all, but a lot of Indian designers, I see their work, there is not a particular specific identity, which is very, that's the first thing you need to do, is to have your own identity. It doesn't matter if people accept or not. Mm -hmm. You have to believe in your uh, own identity, and you have to stick to it. You have to be honest to your own identity, and keep on and on and on till start, people start believing you. Because if you try to be like someone else, there is, there is no There's need, a, yeah. you know, there is someone else already. So Do you, you have to be honest to your own style and find your own identity, which is the starting point. Second, I would say discipline is very important. Mm -hmm. Fashion, sometimes I feel in India is, is not a job. It's, it's more about being a star, you yes. know, and for me, it's not that. Fashion is not about being a star. Fashion is a job like you, you are a lawyer or, or you are, uh, you know, any other job. It, it, it's that. And you have to take it like that. You can think that you can come in page three and you can become like you, you know. Global star in two minutes. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't happen because then you'll only remain in page three. That's yeah. all. And that's not what fashion is for me. Ever. Yeah, that's the fashion business. I mean, yeah. it's not the business of yeah. fashion, not the business of page. So that's the end. You well, can see it, where yeah. the graffiti matches all the garments, and you will see all the girls stand and camouflage and become exactly the, the part. counterpart of the graffiti. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's quite fantastic. So that is a lot of planning. This was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> it's not over yet. <laughs> It was no. not easy to do that. No, no, I'm sure. It's planning. So this was uh, just about a few months ago. No, a few days ago. A few, this is okay. It was last this week. Part yes. of the presses, and there's Manish yes. walking down in his. Um, well, it doesn't uh, matter. That, that, that sweater. <laughs> Sweaters are very famous, um, and and quite the counterpoint to the the colourful images going on. So that's that's an interesting thing. You used to wear lots more colour before. Oh, yeah, I used to, but I still do. But it's just more shiny than colour. Yeah. <laughs> Manish, thank you so much uh, and for sharing your life and your experiences with us. And may you keep on rocking. I hope so. Thank you. <laughs>